subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lapakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 7th of March. India's Prime Minister Modi urges Russia's Putin to hold direct talks with Ukraine's President Zelensky. Opposition asks the Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan to resign ahead of no confidence motion. And Nepal Parliament forms committee to initiate proceedings on impeachment of Chief Justice Rana. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to hold direct talks with his Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky in addition to ongoing negotiations. Prime Minister Modi also called Zelensky over and expressed a deep concern about the humanitarian crisis the conflict has caused. He also underlined the need to evacuate Indian students trapped in eastern Ukraine. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to hold direct talks with his Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky to resolve the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. In the 50-minute long call, Modi was briefed by the Russian leader on the status of the negotiations between the two warring countries. Modi expressed hope that they would lead to cessation of the conflict. The Indian Prime Minister also spoke to Zelensky and expressed deep concern about the humanitarian crisis the conflict had caused. He also underlined the need to evacuate Indian students trapped in eastern Ukraine. India has airlifted more than 10,000 of its citizens, mostly students, from war-torn Ukraine since the Russian invasion began on February 24. Indian nationals have been advised to move to Ukraine's neighboring countries, including Romania, Hungary and Poland, from where they are being brought to India in special flights. और हमें हमारे एजेंट्स ने अवैक्यूएट किया बाय ट्रेन टू हंगरी और फिर हमें वहां से इंडियन एम्बेसी वाले मिले और उन्हें हमें उन्होंने हमें एकोमोडेशन दी और हम वहां पे एक दो दिन रुके और आज सुबह हमारी फ्लाइट थी और डेढ़ सौ बच्चे थे उसमें और हम वापस पहुंच गए before the conflict began इंडियंस मेड अप अबाउट अ क्वार्टर ऑफ सेवेंटी सिक्स according to the Ukrainian government data. India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state on Monday held the seventh and the final phase of assembly polls, a key election for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party, which currently rules the state. The counting of votes will begin on March 10th, with results expected soon after. Polling was held for 54 seats across nine districts in the seventh and the last phase of assembly elections in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state on Monday. The most crucial test for the country and the state's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP before a general election in two years. Uttar Pradesh, home to more than 200 million people, is the bellwether of national politics. A huge voter turnout was witnessed in Varanasi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's parliamentary constituency. BJP's main contenders are Samajwadi Party, Rashtra Lok Dal Alliance and the Congress Party. And I have seen the work of the country and I have seen the work of the country. And I want to say that the government will be able to do the work of the country and the work of the country. The results from the state elections will be a barometer of the BJP's popularity amid criticism over rising inflation, high unemployment and its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic nationwide. I am a first time voter and basically we have been able to get the hospital and the needs of our needs are not complete for us. We have been able to get the needs. The counting of votes in Uttar Pradesh and four other states where voting was held this month will begin on March 10 with results expected soon after. And moving on, the global terror financing watchdog FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, has retained Pakistan on its grey list for failing to meet some of its targets under the additional criteria. 
Pakistan has been on FATF's grey list since 2018 for failing to comply with its mandates. The FATF in a statement asked Pakistan to demonstrate that terror financing investigations and prosecutions target senior leaders and commanders of UN-designated terrorist groups. The country's energy minister, Hamad Azhar, said Pakistan will fulfill the two unmet targets out of 34 action points as soon as possible. We wage war on these activities not just for global compliances, but for our own sake, he said. According to a U.S. Congressional Research Service report, Pakistan is home to at least 12 groups designated as foreign terrorist organizations, including the Lashkar-e Taiba and the Jaish e Mohammed, responsible for 2008 Mumbai attacks and 2001 attack on the Indian parliament. India repeatedly reports infiltration by terrorists from Pakistan into Jammu and Kashmir. And Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has called on Prime Minister Imran Khan to resign before the joint opposition tables a no-confidence motion against the incumbent government. Calling Khan an illegally elected premier, Bilawal warned him to count his remaining days. Pakistan People's Party PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has suggested Prime Minister Imran Khan to resign before the joint opposition tables a no-confidence motion against the incumbent PTI-led government. The PPP has been holding an anti-government long march since February 27 over rising inflation, which is slated to end in capital Islamabad on March 10. The no-confidence motion will be tabled after the long march, party leaders have said. On Sunday, Afzal Nadeem Chan, a senior PTI leader, rejoined PPP as the opposition had get up to seek more support before the no trust motion. So if there is a trust in the government, then we should assemble it. We should come to the government, we should come to the government, we should come to the government, we should come to the government. If they don't do this, the opposition is also ready. And inshallah, if they don't give it, if they don't give it, if they don't give it, then we will come to the government and take it to the government. We will take it to the government and take it to the government. We will take it to the government. Meanwhile, opposition PMLN and PPP have also barred their lawmakers in the National Assembly to travel abroad as the party strive to complete the numbers required for the success of the No Trust motion. Ruling PTI lawmakers have, however, exuded confidence that opposition would fail in its move. And in news from Nepal, Nepal's parliament has formed an 11-member committee to probe into the impeachment motion filed against Chief Justice Cholendra Shamshe Rana. The impeachment motion filed by a total of 98 lawmakers of the ruling coalition on February 13th details 21 charges against Rana, such as failing to protect the integrity of the judiciary and abuse of constitutional responsibility, among others. Nepal's House of Representatives has formed an 11-member impeachment recommendation committee to probe into the impeachment motion filed against Chief Justice Cholendra Samshe Rana. Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota announced the formation of the impeachment recommendation committee during the House meeting on Sunday. Nepal's main opposition, CPN-UML, which has been obstructing House proceedings for almost six months, consented to send four of its lawmakers to the committee. A total of 98 lawmakers from the ruling coalition had filed an impeachment motion against Chief Justice Rana on February 13. The impeachment motion details 21 charges against Rana such as failing to protect the integrity of the judiciary, check corruption and abuse of constitutional responsibility among others. According to the rules, Rana will get a chance to present his case within seven days after the commencement of proceedings before the impeachment recommendation committee. The committee has a maximum of three months to submit a report with recommendations. If the recommendation committee submits a report stating that the impeachment is valid and if the parliament passes it by two-thirds majority, Rana will be relieved of his post. And Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has appointed an economic council to accelerate the country's economic growth through economic management. The economic council, chaired by the President Gotabaya, will include Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa, several other ministers, senior officials, including Governor of the Central Bank Ajit Nivard Cabral. The council, scheduled to meet every week, is tasked with coordinating policy making in response to changes in the global economy, providing relevant advice to ministries. 
departments and statutory institutions and provide guidance on behalf of the government. The South Asian island nation is in the grip of a severe foreign exchange crisis that has led to acute shortages of food, fuel, medicines and industrial raw materials, sending inflation soaring. Last week, the Sri Lankan Central Bank raised its interest rates to curb growing inflationary pressures amid an ongoing foreign exchange crisis that threatens to derail the domestic economy. Moving on to news from Afghanistan, Buskashi sport has been played for centuries across Central Asia and is one of the most enduring and iconic symbols of Afghanistan. For the first time since the Taliban took over in August last year, National League matches resumed on February 24th. Despite crisis, fans feel the game's significance will weather the country's current crisis just as it has outlasted previous wars. Buskashi, which translates roughly as goat pulling, has been played for centuries across Central Asia and is one of the most enduring and iconic symbols of Afghanistan. The often violent national sport of Afghanistan is designed to showcase the rider's horsemanship and warrior spirit. The sport, similar to polo, involves two teams who try to accumulate points by propelling a headless goat carcass to the scoring area. These days, only fake goat carcasses are used. Amid foreign invasions, civil wars, insurgent attacks and more recently the resumption of Taliban rule, Afghans have always gathered to cheer on their favourite Chapandas, as the riders are known. National League matches resumed on February 24 for the first time since the Taliban took over in August last year. تفاوت خود نداره همه تیمی که در سال قبل هم کمی تیم ما در گروپ رو برو شده بودیم همه در بازی جذاب داشتیم مگر همه بازی باز بسیار جذابت زیاف داشت و بسیار از او کده دیگه خوب بود دیگه تفاوتی نیست اگر در این لیگه همون مردم ما هست و همون تیم ما هست همه دیگه در این سیاسی نیست که در این یکان تفاوت آمده باشه هیچ مشکلی در این آمده این لیگه a knockout match was played last week between the Kandahar and Badakhshan province teams in front of about 5,000 Afghans, including members of the Taliban. Kandahar team won the match. For fans, the game's significance will weather the country's current crisis, just as it has outlasted previous wars. گرچه فقر و بیکاری و بیچارگی زیاد است، با خاطر که ما شوق و علاقه که داشتیم به مسابقات بسکشی، انانات تاریخی زیاد، خدمی زیاد داره، ما از بال خامدم بر تماشای مسابقه بسکشی. Previous games were often shadowed by fears of attacks and players faced threats from people in their own province if they played for another provincial team. But the Taliban's harsh crackdown on crime has eased the minds of many. A mega winter carnival in Gulmarg town of India's Jammu and Kashmir aimed to revive tourism and promote young talents of the region witnessed scores of visitors over the past weekend. The main highlights of the three-day event were cultural performances and breathtaking free-fall demonstrations by teams of the high-altitude warfare school. A three-day-long winter carnival festival held in Gulmark town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir over the past weekend attracted tourists and promoted the young talents of the region through a wide range of activities. The main highlights of the carnival were the demonstrations by the teams of High Altitude Warfare School and the Indian Institute of Skiing and Mountaineering. Many young musicians and dancers entertained visitors through their performances during the festival that concluded on Sunday. The event also saw participants by Indian filmmakers, celebrities and designers. इतने सालों के बाद मैं वापस आ रही हूँ और मैं वही जोश देख रही हूँ वो वही sort of जो पहले के positivity वापस आ रही है और जो youth है और यहाँ पर जो winter festival है जो मैंने talent देखी you know the youth they are singing so beautifully they are dancing so well Kashmir Valley is considered one of the most popular tourist destinations in India. It is also popular for winter activities such as snowboarding, skating, sledge rides, cable car rides and snow skiing, making tourism one of the mainstays of the region's economy. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.